Hi everyone, I hope you're all well. I just wanted to take the opportunity to do you a short video um, in honour and celebration of the new moon in Leo and the Lionsgate portal as well. Um, so it's been a really powerful time. I'm sure a lot of you have been feeling the effects of the energies. Um, yesterday, I actually felt quite poorly. Um, I could just feel my sinuses were blocked um, and I felt really nauseous as well. So it felt like I had a bad case of hay fever, but I felt really sick at the same time. Um, and my head was just like, I could feel these massive waves of energy. Just, I just felt like I was being knocked sideways, to be honest. So I had to have a bit of a lie down. And luckily today I'm feeling so much better do get affected by the moon cycles but I just feel like this was amplified and I'm sure it's because of the energies and downloads from the Lionsgate portal being activated so I've had to take it a bit easy this weekend um, but I just wanted to pop on and give us all some messages so I've just come back from holiday um, I had a few days um, up north uh, near Whitby and um, it was a really wonderful few days. Um, I have to say um, for me it was quite uh, detoxifying and I really felt like I was going through a bit of a cleansing. So Whitby Abbey to begin with is somewhere where I've wanted to visit for quite some time. Um, I love gothic architecture and the fact that it's an abbey ruin on top of a cliff near to the ocean combines two of my great loves, which is Gothic architecture and the ocean. So I was really excited about visiting and um, I have to say, when we arrived in the car park and I could see the abbey, I just started crying. I felt so emotional, really overwhelmed and um, as I walked the path to the Abbey, I was getting more and more emotional and I had this past life flashback of having walked that same path before. And um, I said to my husband, I said, oh, I'm so emotional and I feel like I've been here before. And he said, perhaps you were a nun in a past life. And what's really magical is that um, myself and one of my very close friends, we both picked exactly the same card for me from the Spirit Guide Oracle deck. And it's Sister Duty, which is the image of a nun. And um, it all started piecing together because that really resonated for me. And when we actually got to the ruins as well, and I was walking around, there's so many different layers of energy there. It's quite a powerful place, um, not only because it's so spiritual, um, but also because of the history, like the, the timelines that are there. And um, it's obviously ancient, you know, the actual original Abbey ruin. Um, and there's aspects that are slightly newer because the Abbey has had to be re rebuilt um, over time. Um, but, you know, it is very much a ruin. And um, I could feel the sheer terror of the people that were in the Abbey when the Vikings attacked the Abbey and ransacked the Abbey. Um, there was actually a book in the museum, which, you know, if you've seen medieval books, they're just so beautiful, aren't they? The artwork with the writing, the calligraphy is really quite beautiful and the colours that they use. I said to Steve, my husband, I said, look all that blood spatter. Literally all down the edge of the book was blood spatter. And I just thought that's as a result of people that have been murdered at the Abbey by the Vikings. <sighs> just so like, even now just talking about it, I feel really emotional. Um, so for me, it was, a really special pilgrimage because it was a power place which I've wanted to visit for a long time. It certainly didn't disappoint but it was really power 
powerful and overwhelming in terms of my own personal healing and bringing up past life trauma to the surface that needed to be processed and released so yeah that's just a bit about the trip and then being reunited with the ocean was just absolutely amazing I mean I just went down to the waterfront um, and I cried I cried because it felt like I was coming home and because of the pandemic I haven't been able to visit the ocean for probably a couple of years um, and for those of you that are familiar with me and obviously past lives that I've had, I've had various incarnations as a mermaid and so, you know, I feel like the ocean is very much part of me and, um, you know, it's like having an itch that you can't scratch, you know, in any way other than being able to go to the ocean because I'm very blessed in that I actually live not far from a big reservoir but it's just not the same. It's just not the same as actually being on the beach, connecting with the energy of the ocean. So yeah, and I just felt like it was a real moment of purging for me. It was giving that emotional release of what I'd experienced at the Abbey to the waves. So just a little bit about what happened and um, yeah, I feel very blessed. You know to have had that experience so I've had various past life memories come back to me from different um, time frames moments in time um, and if you like me believe that we are living all of our lives simultaneously all at once on different timelines different dimensions different realms different planets um, then you'll kind of probably recognize that feeling of deja vu is actually confirmation that you are part of your soul is in that very place at exactly that same moment so yeah it's it's amazing when you have past life memories it can feel really emotional as well and obviously not all past life memories are traumatic but quite often you will trigger trauma from a past life because that's what needs to be healed in this lifetime this incarnation so very interesting it does fascinate me so I've got some cards today um, I was drawn to work with different cards um, and the goddesses funnily enough so um, the first deck I'm going to draw a card from is the Ascension cards by Diana Cooper just to give us a general message about um, the Lionsgate portal and the energies that are coming in um, just to see what guidance we have and I also wanted to say that today was quite a special day for me because um, I've received an attunement to Arcturian Reiki um, which was just like beyond <laughs> beyond words so powerful so I'm really excited to now be working with this new frequency um, it's just, I mean, for those of you that are familiar with Reiki, that are Reiki practitioners yourself, you'll understand how amazing Reiki healing is. But I feel like this is a whole nother level, whole nother level. Um, so I'm really excited about pursuing this. Um, I've wanted to kind of find my next um, healing modality. Um, because I feel like I'm at that point now where I wanted to kind of learn about another area of healing and this is actually a really, well I say a new modality because it's only been channeled this year but um, it's ancient. The Arcturians, um, they were the ones from the star system of Arcturus Arcturus. They were the beings. Oh gosh, that fell out then. So let me grab the card. Okay, so, oh my gosh. So yeah, the Arcturians, or Arcturans, they were um, the beings that actually discovered Reiki. Um, so in, Reiki has been 
practice since ancient times. It's just that humanity forgot about Reiki and the Arcturians um, basically channeled that information about the traditional Asui Reiki symbols to Dr. Mikau Asui when he went on his spiritual pilgrimage, 21 day pilgrimage. And he was given those symbols to work with. Um, and that traditional method that's been taught over the last 100 years has served humanity really well. Um, but, you know, the Arcturians are wanting to work with light workers and, and other beings as well, you know, many different star beings are wanting to work closely with anyone that is a light worker or healer here on earth um, because the frequencies are now different we're shifting from three dimensional into fifth dimensional existence and so because of that our frequency is shifting and so old methods of healing practice um, it makes sense that you then need to kind of incorporate new healing modalities that are of a high frequency in your practice. So I hope that makes sense. Um, but yeah, it's amazing. I can't say anything else apart from it's amazing. So, okay, so this is our card, the Mahatma energy. So it's number six as well. So six could be important to some of you. In the golden era of Atlantis, many great souls place some of their energy as well as the Christ Buddha light and that of the 12 rays into a sacred pool to create a high frequency group consciousness. People could draw from this sacred pool to enhance themselves and their projects. This golden white Mahatma energy is once more available and you are invited to draw it through your chakra system into the earth. This will raise your frequency and help the planet, for you will leave golden white footsteps wherever you go. Send it to others to accelerate their ascension. Wow, how beautiful. I invoke the Mahatma energy to flow through me. Okay, so I think we should do this as a little exercise to invoke that energy. So I'm just going to put my hands into prayer position. Look at the artwork, it's so amazing, isn't it? 
so the violet flame number 52 and five and two make seven so the number seven could also be of importance and obviously number seven is traditionally a lucky number so the violet flame the keepers of the violet flame or archangel Zadkiel and his um, twin flame um, which is holy amethyst so these two archangels work closely together um, to help us channel the violet flame energy to clear away anything that no longer serves us and so that's very much about what this energy is coming in for from the Lionsgate portal. Not only is it powerful energy to help us manifest um, and to help us create, because it's very creative energy as well, um, it's also there to help us release and heal from past trauma as well. And so the violet flame energy is very much energy that you can call in to cleanse your auric field of any negative energy so that then your vessel is clear. So I definitely encourage you to work with the violet flame more, especially if you're feeling bogged down and your energy is feeling quite dense. You know, I think as humans, we quite often do feel like our energy gets quite stuck and it's like walking through mud you know when we feel a little bit off kilter uh, because we're so used to um, in other lifetimes um, having an etheric body and being a lot lighter because we don't have a dense human body you know for awakened star seeds to have that realization it can feel really heavy in the human body so definitely work with the violet flame to help clear your aura i hope that makes sense i also wanted to pick a card from the magical dimensions oracle cards and activations again just to see if there is um, an energy that's coming in for us a particular activation this lionsgate portal for us to focus on so let's just see have to tell us what is their message okay so this is our card manifestation <laughs> I love that so much so I was just talking about one of the um, energetic powers that will come through this Lionsgate portal is the power to help us manifest. And because it's a new moon as well, it's, you know, the new moon is all about manifestation, setting your intentions. So I just love that so much. And um, I just look at this card because I really feel there's like Alvin energy on this card from the figure on here. Um, and he looks like an elven wizard as well, can you see? And it says manifestation number 29. So 2 and 9 is 11 as well, which is a master number. So again, um, number 11, or if you minimise that number down, uh, 1 plus 1 is 2. So the number 2 as well. And it says prosperity, fortune, pure intentions. So it's about getting really clear with what it is that you want to manifest into your life. Um, you know, if you feel confused about what it is that you want to manifest, then that's what the universe is going to bring in for you because the energy is confused because you're not being clear as to what it is that you actually want to attract into your life. And it doesn't have to be, you know, something that's extreme like an extreme change of life if you're happy with the way your life is it could be that you just want to attract more happiness and more positive events and you know more soul connections you know with new people maybe um so it doesn't have to be anything that's life-changing if you don't want it to be remember you are the creator of this life so your thoughts your visions are a 
reflection in your outer world. So it's really time to get clear on your intentions. And it is a time where a lot of you may be reaping rewards. So prosperity, abundance, you know, um, opportunities. Um, there's lots of um, golden energy on this card, so I do feel like for some of you there could be um, a monetary gain coming in for you or um, financial support of some kind coming in for you. It could be the opportunity to um, take on more work, to earn extra income, or it could be a bonus, it could be um, an unexpected windfall, it could be an inheritance, it could be a lucky win, you know. So just be grateful as well. Be grateful for the abundance the universe wants to send your way. So I hope you take that message as well. So the last thing I wanted to do is work with some of my goddess oracle cards just to see which goddesses are working with us at the moment. And it may be that um, there is one particular goddess you are drawn to. It could be a goddess you're already familiar with, you already work with, um, with your healing or psychic work. Um, or it could be somebody that you've never heard of before and you'd like to know more about them. So I've got three decks, um, Goddess Guidance Oracle Cards. I've also got Goddess Power Oracle Cards and the Cherokee Goddess Oracle as well. So let's just see which goddesses are wanting to come forward for us today and work with us. So let's see. Um, and it could be that this is a protection goddess for some of you. It could be somebody that you've worked with for a long time. Um, it could be that um, this goddess has a message that actually resonates strongly with you. Um, oh gosh, so we've got, oh we've got, we've got three that have popped up here. So I'm just going to trust in that. So three goddesses already. So these are our three. So the first one is Butterfly Maiden Transformation. You are experiencing enormous change right now, which brings great blessings. So this is definitely a goddess to work with if you are going through dark night of the soul, a tower moment in your life, change and transformation. Um, so that's the first one. Second one is Maeve, cycles and rhythms. Honor the cycles of your body, energy levels and emotions. So looking at this card, um, Maeve looks like she's connected with both water, so the element of water, and also um, the forests, because there's forests on this card. Um, and I also feel like she's connected with the auroras as well. Um, so anybody that is going through particular cycle at the moment, so whether a cycle is starting or coming to an end, um, or you're experiencing a change in your own personal seasons within your body, so it might be that you're going from winter mode, which is rest, retreat, solitary, to then say spring, so you're then starting something new, a new beginning. So cycles and rhythms, honour the cycles of your body, energy levels and emotions. So it's about honouring your body, um, your physical vessel as well. So don't neglect your physical vessel. And the last one is Brigid. Uh, don't back down. So this particular goddess um, is associated with in bulk. Um, so it's a spring festival or sabbat. And she's a, a fire goddess as well. Can you see that? And it says stand up for what you believe is right. So this is all about expressing your authenticity, speaking your truth, honouring your truth, not backing down, um, being true to yourself, being true to others. So Brigitte is a great one to work with if you need courage and strength to stand up for yourself and your beliefs. So moving on to Goddess Power, and we'll see what 
what we have from Goddess Power. So I'm being told two from this particular deck. So I'm just going to trust in that. Number one. Which goddess is it working with us at the moment? And what are their messages? First one's Matt Truth. Wow. Okay, so this is closely related to Brigitte as well. Um, and uh, Matt is a, a Egyptian goddess, the goddess of justice and truth. So again, this is all about standing up for your beliefs, standing up for justice, expressing your authenticity, standing in your power. And the other card is Gula, which is healing. Okay, so this is a great goddess to work with if you're undergoing your own healing at the moment or someone close to you is in need of healing. Um, also on these cards they have got numbers so we've got 31 on Matt so that could also be number four and on this card we have number 19 so that could also be 10 if you add one and nine together so I feel like for some of you this is actually symbolizing the end of a healing cycle for you so you have been going through a lot of healing um, particularly around your heart and solar plexus, so stomach and heart center. Um, green energy is about the divine masculine as well, so it could be that you're healing from relationships involving um, men in your life. Um, this could be grief, or this could be um, letting go of a relationship or friendship. Um, yeah, so it could also be balancing that divine masculine energy so it could be that divine feminine energy has been dominating and you need to connect more with your divine masculine for some of you um, but definitely work with Gula if you are walking the path of a healer or you're undergoing healing or you want to help heal a loved one or a close friend so I hope you can take those messages as well and then last of all, the Terraki Goddess Oracle. Let's see what goddesses speak to us from this deck as well. So this video is slightly longer than I anticipated, but obviously Spirit has a lot to say today. <laughs> so I'm just going to trust in that. Um, okay, so goddesses, who is with us and what are your messages to the collective? Appreciate the early stages, they are integral to the journey. So again, this goddess is very much about new beginnings. So if you are experiencing a spring in your life where you're starting something new, um, work with Easter. Um, but just look at how beautiful this card is as well. We've got the rainbow. So I feel like for some of you, rainbow bridge could be that you are recovering from grief over the loss of a loved one but it could also be that some of you are interested in walking the path of mediumship and so definitely work with Easter for, for that because it could be that she actually wants to help you strengthen your abilities in regards to your mediumship and connecting with the other world with the spirit realm um, lots of butterflies as well so I feel like similar to butterfly maiden she's a good goddess to work with when you're undergoing transformation personal transformation and change and the last card we have is Anat surrender this is beautiful and it says when I let go the reins of control when I let go of the reins of control I thrive isn't that lovely so this is all about 
going with the flow of life, surrendering to the will of the universe, surrendering to that divine plan that you know on a soul level exists. Um, and so it's trusting in the universe, trusting that you are being directed in, in the right direction and not forcing change, not forcing things to happen because sometimes when we try and force things, there's a lot of, um, we find that there's um, barriers or blocks to what it is that we're trying to achieve. And that's because sometimes it isn't actually what is the best thing for us at this time. So it's almost like the universe is redirecting us to something better, to a different path. Um, so for anybody that is feeling overwhelmed, overworked, stressed or lost, then work with an app to help you surrender more, to go with the flow more, connect with the divine feminine, which is all about slowing down and surrendering to the power of the universe and allowing nature to, to lead you um, and trusting in your intuition, okay, and the whispers of your soul, because your soul is always whispering to you, nudging you in the right direction but sometimes you choose to ignore those whispers. Um, so it's about journeying within, journeying within, you know, feeling that peace within yourself and listening to your soul's whispers. But it is very much about um, if you are somebody that likes control, if you are somebody that likes structure and you struggle with um, flexibility or adaptability it's basically a message that you need to give yourself permission to let go okay um, that it's okay to surrender it's okay to go with the flow a bit more rather than always feeling the need to be in control all the time and have you know constant goals to work towards you know having goals is great you know because you've got um, something to focus on, but don't allow that to dominate your life. That's what I'm hearing. Just surrender, let it go. Give your worries and cares to Anat. Allow her to car carry the burdens for you. So I hope that makes sense as well. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, again, I can't believe how long <laughs> I've been on today because I really didn't imagine that it would be such a long video. Um, but obviously, Spirit had a lot to say. I had a lot to say. Um, so wishing you all a blessed new moon in Leo and Lionsgate Portal. And I'll speak to you all very, very soon. Take care.